Good afternoon from uh, San Diego. My name's uh, Nick Bonas. I am one of the founders of Hallmark Veterinary Imaging and I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about bringing 3D imaging into your practice. So Hallmark was founded about 20 years ago um, and at that time there were very few MRI systems. What uh, MRI was was high field general anesthesia systems uh, adapted from human scanners. Uh, they were in universities or academic institutions. They weren't really practical from a clinical case point of view, but what they did do is prove that MRI had enormous clinical value, uh, particularly for soft tissue and for what's called bone edema or various uh, synonyms for that. So Hallmark was founded with the idea of bringing MRI into the clinic uh, with a machine that was designed specifically for horses and in particular for standing horses in a safe manner. So it had to be accessible and it had to be affordable to actually use in a day-to-day -day clinic rather than just in a, an academic in university type environment. That product was introduced in around 2003 and advanced quite considerably in 2006, 2007. And it really introduced not only MRI but uh, some more fundamental technologies. So for many of our customers it was their first venture into digital imaging. Uh, it was their first use of DICOM for packs and uh, a lot of our installations we spent as much time fixing the DICOM as we did fixing the MRI. Uh, it was the first introduction into 3D imaging, so slices rather than superposition, rather than something like an ultrasound where you've got a thin slice, you had a stack of images and you could change the orientations of those images so that you could see, as you can see on our, on our pictures here, um, sagittal slices, transverse slices, frontal slices or any oblique orientation that you chose. Uh, in particular and including angles that are completely inaccessible from a, an x-ray point of view where the, the generator would simply have to be in the middle of the limb or something like that. Um, and in the MRI sense it also introduced the concept of multiple contrasts. So MRI has T1 and T2 weighted and stir contrasts and such things as don't exist in, in digital, <coughs> digital imaging, uh, x-ray, bone scanning, ultrasound. So it was not only revolutionary in the MRI sense, but revolutionary in many wider senses. Uh, that was a revolutionary product, and uh, standing MRI really took off. We now have systems in 25 countries. We have about 125 installations. Um, we install them not only in a room in the clinic, but also in a self-contained module. You can see a photograph there I took just last week. Uh, and worldwide, something like 350,000 horses have been scanned. Hallmark as a company has grown from, from me and two co-founders to now 60 employees spread around the world in four different offices. Uh, we have employees in, in, based in four countries. And it may be a particularly British thing, but we're very proud of having won two Queen, uh, three Queen's Awards for, for industry in, in terms of innovation and international trade. You can see from the, the graph here, um, how the number of scans is increasing more or less exponentially. So the early years it was just getting started, but the adoption of MRI means that now scans are, you know, a number of scans that are being done are just accelerating enormously. So Hallmark's real sort of mission in life is to bring 3D imaging into a practical practice environment. So the thing has to be safe. It has to be safe for the horse uh, and it has to be safe for you and your staff. It has to be effective, it has to be diagnostically useful. It has to be affordable um, <coughs> for yourself and for your clients. Um, in many clinic environments you don't have the opportunity for high capital spend that you might have in a, an academic or grant funded organisation. It has to fit into your practice procedures, so for example uh, it's operable by veterinary technicians um, within their, their wide skill set. Veterinary technicians are, are skilled people, but they're not specialist radiographers, they're not specialist in, in, in other um, skills, but uh, something that can be used by your vet techs and something that can be used in a day case environment, so not necessarily a hospital with 24 hour support, but something where your client can bring the case in in the morning, scan it and leave it leave in the afternoon. Our focus has been on the, the bread and butter caseload. We don't uh, put extra fancy bells and whistles into our machines so that you can do that very rare, exotic and exciting case. We want to focus on the things that you do day to day that pay the bills. 
So our MRI product really revolutionized lameness diagnosis. It's not an ISELP uh, equine product, but we also have a small animal MRI. Um, that introduced the uh, concept of not having a Faraday cage, which reduces cost, and not having helium, which also reduces cost, and helium is, is becoming a rare resource, so not using helium is a, a, a big plus. And our next step, um, about five years ago now, was to do the same for equine CT as we did for equine MRI. So five years ago, CT systems looked a little bit like that picture in the middle there. Um, they were converted, modified human systems, donut-shaped systems. They may have been uh, modified with a elevating GA table. They may be modified with some kind of a, a lift arrangement. As you can see in the front there, it's a, it's a pit which a standing horse can, can stand in for head scanning. Um, obviously, in this system, you can see that they had both, so one from one end, one from another end. The various different contraptions have been arranged with um, air ride mechanisms and so on, but uh, all adapted from human machines and all of a closed ring kind of form. Well, much like our early days of MRI when we wanted to try and get rid of the donut shaped tube arrangement, um, so similarly for CT, the primary objective was to make it safe for horses. So we made a machine which is completely open. And you can see on the right hand side there, uh, a close up shot of the feet of a horse in one of our systems. If it wants to get out, it can just walk forwards, it can just walk backwards. Generally, a horse will be bright enough, even under sedation, not to walk straight into the machine. It'll find a way out. Um, also, these devices have uh, low scattered, low um, radiation, so that your technicians can, with the appropriate PPE or behind a screen, uh, stand there and hold the horse. Um, they don't have to be behind a brick wall, be behind a lead screen, be in a, a separate room, as you often have to be with the human type machines. Of course, it has to be effective, it has to be practical to install it in your clinical environment, and it has to be affordable. Now, there are a couple of design choices when you're building a CT machine. Um, they're called fan beam and cone beam, and that relates to the shape of the X-ray beam. You can see from the picture on the left-hand side there that a fan beam produces a fan, a very thin slice of X-rays. Um, now, <clears throat> and then that slice is moved through the patient, usually by moving the patient, so the patient goes onto a, a sliding table of some sort. In this kind of device, you have a very powerful X-ray tube inside a enclosed donut-shaped container. Uh, so the horse has to be positioned on a table, or if it's going to be standing, it has to be restrained in some way so that the operators can get well out of the way because of the high level of radiation during the scan. And that has consequences for how you handle the horse. These machines do have very high image quality, and particularly um, they can not only image bone, but they can give you some kind of representation of soft tissue contrast. Uh, but they have the highest cost, both in, in the actual capital cost of the machine itself and in terms of installation and operating it. At the other end of the scale, you have comb beam machines. These are particularly popular in human dentistry, for example. You've probably, as a, as a human patient, had a comb beam CT <coughs> in, in your ordinary dental experience. Um, they're very open shaped machines. They have a, a source and a detector, but not necessarily a framework in between them. So that makes it very uh, convenient for the standing horse and, as I mentioned before, unimpeded escape. Of course, if you're going to build a machine for a standing horse, you have to build motion correction into it. Um, so that's a, a, a part of the design choices as you choose to make a cone beam machine. Uh, from a safety point of view, it does have the benefit of low radiation, so it's comparable with the kind of radiation that you'll see uh, for a, a, a DR uh, X-ray that you'll be using every day. The image quality has to be diagnostic, of course, and one of the advantages of a comb beam machine is that you can get extremely high resolution, but you lose the soft tissue, or at least at this current point in time, you use most of the soft tissue capability. But the general design choice allows you to build a lower cost, affordable machine. So this is what the machine looks like close up. You have a X-ray generator, you have an X-ray detector, 
you have a, a level floor that the horse can walk in and out, and then the device rotates around the limb of the horse. You can see the yellow cone there representing the cone beam, and it just rotates around a single leg. Because, because it's, that single leg is very close to the detector, you get exceptionally high resolution. The device rotates around 360 degrees in exactly 60 seconds, so the scan time is just one minute. Um, it's completely practical to, to bring a horse in, sedate it, scan it, and take it out again inside 10 to 15 minutes. The device is uh, fixed in height, so it's a, a foot machine, paston machine, fetlock machine. We move the height of the horse by standing on those, uh, those blocks rather than the height of the device. And, uh, as I mentioned before, it does need motion correction. We'll look at some of that a little bit later. So this was introduced first in the UK, where Hallmark's headquarters are based. Um, we had five and six systems as beta sites, um, and every single one of those has moved on to the full contract. Every single one of those has been sufficiently satisfied and find the device useful and clinically valuable and has moved on to a full contract. Currently scanned over 1,500 horses, and that experience has shown that our customers find it's complementary or even an alternative to DR. They may simply move the horse straight into the CT because it's so quick and convenient anyway. Um, it's complementary to MRI. So for CT, you get high resolution of bony tissues. For MRI, you get soft tissue capability. Um, and it may reduce the need for surgery or, or, or arthroscopy because you can see on the CT without having to go in in an invasive manner. 3D imaging by its very nature eliminates superposition and enlargement and uh, inaccessible beam angles. So it's, it's more convenient to be able to get an image which represents precisely what you want to see. And as a result, you can see things like non-displaced fractures where superposition might have obscured them or P3 fractures where you know that if you know where it is and you can line up with it yes it's clear to see but it's a lot that takes a lot of different shots maybe to be able to find an obscure P3 fracture. Um, similarly with um, abscess tracts it may take a while to find one. Uh, it can be useful for surgical planning and particularly for standing surgery. So if you're not going to anaesthetize the horse for surgery, you don't particularly want to anaesthetize it for your, for your diagnostic imaging. So to be able to do both standing is a, a positive advantage. Um, it can see both subtle changes in bone density and more significant but physically small changes in bone. So osteophytes, avulsion fractions, cyst-like lesions, that kind of thing. Sufficient uh, research work has been published. I've just put some, uh, some key points up here. Um, but if you look at uh, Su Ting Ling, she was a, a student, just, just left um, Rossdales and Cambridge now, but she did a series of work on uh, thoroughbred cadaver limbs, and you can see palmar osteochondral disease, um, parasagittal grooves, proximal phalanx, and heterotopic mineralization as four separate papers. And there's another one on uh, histology coming through the system. And we also have a customer working on uh, a publication related to contrast. So I've mentioned the advantage of uh, lack of superposition. Um, and, and here's just one example from a case that uh, I was involved in scanning just a couple of weeks ago. So the photograph on the extreme left hand side is, is clinically, I <coughs> will admit, not representative of what you'd expect to see because this is an iPhone photograph of a computer screen. But uh, you can see that whilst there is a bone fragment there, it's not particularly evident. Whereas if you look at the central CT um, presentation, and uh, MPR stands for multiplanar reconstruction, so that means that you can, on the computer, move the exact slice position of the images that you're having a look at to focus precisely on the feature that you're trying to investigate. So you can see where those crosshair lines intersect on both the top and bottom image. The, the little fragment there stands out so much more clearly than it does on the DR on the left-hand side. Um, an alternative way of presenting CT images is to do what's called a surface renderer, so that looks as if you're physically looking at the bone. People sometimes call this the surgeon's scan. Um, and here you can see that little fragment stands out quite clearly. 
There's a number of other cases that I've put here, and this is not a clinical talk, I'm not going to run through them, but if I can get a mouse to appear, not sure that I can here. You can see on, oh, here we go, a very slow mouse. Yeah, there we go. You can see a lesion in the navicular bone in this sagittal slice. Just because you have a single slice, you don't have any superposition, so it stands out very clearly. You take the same location, but from a different angle. You can see here, and you can see here. So this is a very obvious feature, but it stands out extremely clearly in these slices. Same sort of lesion, but in the pedal bone, very much larger in this case. So you can see not only the lesion in the bone here, but you can see how it communicates with the, the IP joint space. Keratomas are one of those features which are somewhat difficult to see, um, but you can, <coughs> you can see in this image here how uh, it's affecting P3, and uh, I'm not so sure on this one that you can see the soft tissue contrast element of it, but we have cases where you can. P1 fractures may be um, twisted, so it's very difficult to get a single plane which is straightforward to image with, uh, with DR. And also the uh, non-displaced fracture can be very, very small. So if you're trying to identify where it ends, you need something with very high resolution that will allow you to follow the shape of the, of the fracture um, to work out, particularly for surgical planning, where exactly and what angle it is for putting screws in. Um, Osseocyst-like lesions, so there's a little cyst here that you can see in, uh, in distal P1. Pedal bone fractures, so okay, pedal bone fractures can be difficult to see by DR unless you know where they are and therefore you can get the angle right. Um, but in 3D imaging where you can do all that slicing retrospectively on a computer, you can come in and uh, find precisely where the issue may be. CT is primarily a bone that is a dense tissue imaging technique, but you can, just like with x-ray, you can artificially increase the x-ray density with contrast agents. It's exactly the same contrast agent as, as you would use, so some kind of iodinated agent. Um, and in this particular image, we have a tenogram, so the tendon sheath has been highlighted. You can do the same sort of thing with arthrograms. Here's a Another example further up in the fetlock, so you can see a, um, a fracture there in the sesamoid, and in fact you can see that it's in two elements, so you have um, both a, a horizontal element and a vertical element. <coughs> it's possible to present, as I mentioned earlier, the surface. Now this is something you can't really do in MRI because in MRI you don't really have a hard surface. You've got all sorts of different tissue contrasts, but you don't have a hard surface. In CT, this kind of image has a couple of advantages. It's very handy for surgeons in terms of visualizing in 3D space where they might want to uh, put their screws or plates or whatever. Uh, but it's also very convenient for showing your client because this is, this is extremely easy for an untrained human being to understand where multiple x-rays in multiple different angles might be a little bit more challenging. So, we've talked about the product, we've talked about why do we designed it that way, what do we end up with? Well, we end up with a, a machine that can be installed in one of two configurations. It can be installed in a room in your clinic. Uh, because the x-ray power is relatively low, it's blocked by 10 centimetres, 4 inches of ordinary brickwork or blockwork. So you don't need a lead screened room, just a, a plain room will do. Um, and you can raise the floor so that the whole device is quite level. The horse just steps up on a, a, a little ramp uh, and then it's extremely convenient to use. You can see a screen there which protects the operator. We have one screen for the computer operator and one screen for the horse handler. But the horse handler is, is right there with a couple of lead ropes either side of the horse and can be really in communication, can see 
that horse a judge sedation. Uh, it's very convenient. We have an alternative configuration, which, much like the MRI, is a self-contained module. So it's the size and shape and has the fittings of a shipping container. Um, easy to transport, drop in a corner of the car park. Uh, and you can see from those pictures on the right-hand side there, uh, one of our more recent installations, uh, both from outside and with a horse walking in through the front door. Those modules, the horse walks in through the front door and out through the back door. So you don't have to turn a horse round if you want to scan the front legs and the hind legs, you just walk it through a little bit further. Commercially, commercially <coughs> is not my expertise. If you're in America and you want to uh, talk money, talk to Erin, who's um, waiting, waiting in the wings here. Um, she's our new business manager for the Americas. But much like our MRI, we operate with a, a FIPA scan model. So Hallmark continues to own and support and upgrade the machine. There is a fee for delivery and for monthly maintenance, um, but on a regular basis there's a, scan, a fee per scan. Uh, in MRI we started off in terms of trying to encourage the use of MRI when somebody had had a scan and then for some reason, almost any reason at some point in the future they wanted another scan either to follow up um, recovery, rehabilitation, uh, assessment of fitness to compete um, or just for incidental reasons five years later they got a completely different problem uh, we have a second fee a lower scan fee um, we do the same thing in CT but we also have special terms for combinations of CT and MRI so we manipulate our lower scan fees such that if you're doing both a CT and an MRI you're not paying full price for both of them product comes with Hallmark's exemplary QCare support, so we have proper engineers at the end of a phone who will help you rather than put you on some kind of AI-based chat system. Um, and we have marketing support, so our marketing <coughs> manager is also sitting in the wings here, um, and we can help you with uh, case studies and literature and the kind of words that you need to put on your Facebook, Instagram website. Of course, in uh, providing all that for you, there's a couple of things that we demand from you. We, we want from your end, um, so there is a minimum fee, in the, a minimum number of scans in the contract, uh, and there is a fixed period for the contract that we do give you a reasonable break option. So I'm going to leave you with a video running of uh, one of our UK customers just to show how it's used in practice, and uh, otherwise, thank you for watching. The Velcro strap you see there, the purple Velcro strap, holds a little ball bearing, which is what we use for motion correction. It identifies the position and then the computer works out how it's moved and how to correct it. You can see this video was made uh, just after COVID. So for the fetlock scanning, the foot stands on the floor. That lowers everything to the right height for scanning the fetlock. You saw the earlier foot scans are raised on blocks. Two staff, one to manage the horse and one to manage the computer, uh, are fine. You don't need any more.
Thank you. And anyone who's at AAP, do come and see us on stand 2015. Thank you.